Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. I think the, the last big thing we probably need to talk about when we talk about public speaking is probably the number one thing people think about with public speaking, and that is you know fear, anxiety, <laughs> uh, just they're afraid they're going to get laughed at. Most of us don't like being in front of other people talking yeah. all day. Um, I talk all day for a living as an instructor, um, but I will tell you, when I go and speak in front of a, you know, a, a conference that has you know, 500 or 1,000 people, it still is nerve wracking to me because even though I talk all day, I'm usually talking in front of a camera or in a room by myself or talking one on one with somebody like you. Like, yes, there's you know thousands of people who are going to listen to this, but really right now it's just you and me talking. So it feels not anxiety filled at all. Right. But if I walk out into a room, there's 500 people out there. I'm going to feel anxiety. Um, how do you overcome that anxiety when you want to deliver your confident presentations and things like that? Well, there's a couple of things. One is to recognize that nerves and feeling anxious is completely normal. And that there are things and techniques that you can do to help manage the nerves. Uh, so I will just speak into a couple of those things first. One is you can do breathing exercises of calming the nervous system or that vagus nerve, which is what uh, kicks in that fight or flight response. Doing box breathing exercises or inhaling through the nose. I do one that's inhale through the nose on a four count, exhale through the mouth on a seven count, just noticing the rise and fall of your of your abdomen or your chest and dropping in. Another way is to uh, turn it into excitement. So take that nervous energy, whether that means I used to do push-ups before I got up on stage just to get the adrenaline rushing, get those eebie-jeebies moving in a different direction. And I would count out loud so that I was also uh, warming up my voice at the same time doing power poses in the bathroom, the Amy Cuddy power poses with your arms up <laughs> or your hands on your hips, uh, anything that you can do to warm yourself up. But it's about intentionality. And what I've noticed is that a lot of people don't take enough time before they present to warm themselves up and to really drop in and figure out a way that's, that they can best manage those nerves. So I, I call it the pre-presentation ritual. And so I invite your listeners to think, for themselves, what's your pre-presentation ritual? What do you need before you get on stage or before you give a virtual presentation? So if it's running in place or listening to your favorite music or doing vocal warm-ups or standing in a stall doing Amy Cuddy poses or breathing, find something that's going to work for you. Another thing is that if you get the opportunity to meet and greet your audience before you get on stage, I've noticed for myself, that's an incredible way to manage the nervous system because I'm making eye contact with people in my audience. I get to shake some hands. I get to ask some questions. I get to know who they are. And that I found has also been very helpful. So it really depends on what your setup is and what your individual needs are, but use it as a superpower. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. And I, I really like your last tip, which is, you know, getting to know somebody in the audience or a few somebody's in the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the speaking engagements I have done have been as part of a larger conference where it's a one or two or three day conference. And if I'm speaking on the end of the first day or middle of the second day or on the third day or whatever it is, I've already had a chance to meet a lot of people. And so by the time I get there and I'm on stage, as I'm looking out over the audience of 500 people, I can probably identify five people in different parts of the room that I know uh, just from having talked to them over the day. And so as I'm doing my presentation, I'm like looking back corner over there, there's John, back corner over there, there's Susie, right? Up in the yes. front, there's Mary. And so as I'm talking, I look like I'm going around the audience to various people, but it's like the five or six people I met earlier through the conference yeah. and I already had a connection. I'm like, oh, John's not going to make fun of me. He and I are friends. We've already talked for, we've had a couple of beers over the last couple of days or whatever, right? Or yeah. me and Mary, we've had a lot of conversations, so it's okay. And so when I'm looking at them, it looks like to everybody around that person, like you're talking directly to them because you're constantly moving your eyes to the different places, but you're actually looking at one person. And that is, it's kind of like your anchor in this crowd, right? Um, the other thing I've done, if I'm if I have to go straight out on on stage and I have not had a chance to meet anybody, like first presentation of the day, um, I'll just kind of stare towards the back wall and move from the left wall to the right wall to the center, yep. to left to the right to the center, and so it constantly looks like I'm looking around the room at everybody, but really I'm looking at a blank wall because that way I'm not freaking out that there's a thousand people in front of me all staring back. <laughs> and the other thing too is you can like because usually you can only see the first two rows because of the lighting, yeah. So you can do a focus and finish, like you can look at somebody on stage or audience left. Give them eye contact. It's okay. And then finish your thought, move to someone in the center, and then move someone to the right if you didn't have the opportunity. 
Uh, but that takes practice too. And yeah. it, it takes a level of confidence to be able to make that. It's not creepy eye contact. It's just one, one thought in your head, but yeah. also helps your audience feel that you're connecting with them as well. Um, the other thing I always like to tell people, since, since you brought up conferences, last year I got to work at the AWS Amazon reInvent conference. And so one thing I was telling them was like, I know all of you are networking and you're having some drinky drinks and then you're probably getting up early in the morning and drinking coffee. And this is we're in Vegas and it's dry. So there's also other things that we can do that we may not be thinking about that's going to help us with our nerves and to present with more confidence, which is you've got to be super hydrated, which means that you start that three days beforehand and don't be drinking coffee just before you walk up on stage because that can also cause a little bit more anxiety that's unnecessary for you. So I'm just saying, you know, party with caution if you're yeah. at a conference. And, and also, you know, knowing yourself and what yes. works for you. Yes. Um, you know, for some people, like they can't get out of bed without that cup of coffee in the morning. For me, I'm, I'm a Coca-Cola person. It's in the morning as we're talking and people probably see on the video stream that I keep grabbing my, my Coke can and, and I'm drinking it. That's my coffee in the morning. Um, but knowing what works for you yeah. and knowing that, you know, hey, if I have a presentation at 10, I better be up by eight so I can be up, dressed, yep. move around. I'm not waking up at you know 9.45 to be you know jumping on a call at 10 because then you're rushed and you're feeling more anxious because you're, you're up against a deadline. Give yourself more time, get a little more relaxed, be comfortable in the environment you're in. I think those are all things that will help. And then the other thing is, as you said, practice does make you better. The more you do it, the better you're going to get. I was not a great present presenter on my first presentation. Uh, now I've done you know, 15, 20, 30 different conferences that I've spoke at. I'm really good and really confident at it now, and I can do it pretty well. That being said, the nerves will never go completely away for most people. I know one person who they go and speak on a different stage every single week, and every single time before he gets up on stage, he throws up because the nerves get to him. And that's part of his pre-show ritual is he knows <laughs> that if he's going to be there at, at 10 o'clock at 930, he's probably going to end up puking because he gets so nervous, but he loves presenting. And once he's out on the stage, after that first couple of sentences, he gets into his flow and you'd never know. But you know, if you were behind stage with him five, 10 minutes earlier, he was there puking in a bucket, right? Because oh. he was just having yeah. that, that feeling, you know? And, and that is somebody who gets paid professionally to speak yes. every single week. So oh. what chance I do mean, the rest of us have, you know? <laughs> Broadway, Broadway actors take beta blockers. There's some of yep. them that are just, they're so nervous every single, and they're getting on stage eight times a week. Yep. So you're not, and I think that's important to just understand you're not alone in that. In fact, I feel nervous if I'm not nervous, to be completely honest with you, because there's just, a, there's a beautiful energy about how those nerves can be transformed on a stage if you use them as an asset. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that very much that you just, mm -hmm. just shared that the, the person that you know, the person, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I think after after a couple of weeks, and if it wasn't going away, I'm like, okay, I'm finding a new career. But he does it every know, day, and it's great. <laughs> well, there's one thing I want to also add in too, which is so funny because I'm I've been blurry this whole time. I just want to call that out, which is being adaptable. Yeah, that just reminded me of like you never know when stuff is going to go wrong, even if you're at a tech conference. Like you don't know when stuff's going to go wrong. So that's also why practice is incredibly important because the more you know your material, the more adaptable you can be. And so if things don't go right, like your lavalier mic isn't working or your handheld isn't working or the slides aren't working, to be able to just roll with it and not be apologetic about it and to be able to stay in connection with your audience. Yep. Yeah. And, and the slides is a big one. I was at a conference once where the speaker's slides weren't working. Like essentially yeah. the, the remote died and they couldn't yeah. get it to advance and it was just stuck on the title slide. And literally they could not give their presentation because they were so cued to the slides. Yep. And if the slides weren't there, they weren't able to know where they were supposed to be. So always have, I like to have a little backup. So for me, yep. I have a little index card. That's yep. my outline. If I have eight slides, I would just say, you know, one title, two, mission, three, vision, whatever those things are that I'm covering. And that at least give me my, my, my if, if the slides aren't working, I can pull that out and go, okay, this is my outline. I can keep going, right? But being comfortable with your material helps with that. Um, and, and slides can be a big issue. Uh, the more tech you get, the more interactive you get. The more chances there's things that are going to go wrong. The more chances uh, are. You know, but you, you do have a better presentation. It's more interesting, right? So, um, but it's okay. You just need to be able to work through those things because sometimes the tech will not work. Sometimes the slides won't work. Sometimes the projector bulb burns out. Sometimes the mic goes out. There's all sorts of things. Um, I was in one presentation where there was about 300 people in the audience and the mic didn't work because they forgot yep. to charge the thing. So I'm in the presentation about three minutes into it. I get through my intro, one of the lavalier wireless mics 
batteries die, right? So what do you do? You know, you could sit yeah. there and be like, hey guys, come come up here, right? And so I just started speaking louder uh, yeah. and trying to yell uh, for yeah. the next 30 seconds. And then somebody ran over with a handheld mic and they gave me that. And then they, you know, as I kept going after about 10 minutes, they finally got the lavalier back up and we got it working. But we didn't stop. We just kept going with it and worked through the ad adaptation. Uh, and, and I think that's really important too. And this kind of yeah. goes back to your background with improv. You know, yes, yes. and uh, whatever it is, like, let's just keep going with it because we got to get going. there. <laughs> yeah, you just got to keep going and not be apologetic. And sometimes those mistakes can become gifts, right? Yeah. So say like the mic never worked and you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to go out into the audience now and deliver this talk. Yep. Or whatever. It could actually create a, an environment that you hadn't anticipated for better learning. So there's there's all sorts of different gifts that can come from mistakes. The other thing I wanted to add to, since you, the conference thing and confidence monitors is one thing that I want to bring up as well, because I also noticed that people get really stuck on their confidence monitors. And if people, for your listeners who don't know what I'm talking about, it's usually the screen that's put down at uh, your feet. Oftentimes that's where it's placed that will have your slides and your slide notes on it. And I will notice that people who are presenting will use those confidence monitors as a crutch. It's like their script uh, conveniently at their feet. And sometimes those will go out too. So you cannot ever depend on any technology, period, when yep. you're presenting. Yeah, I, I've used those conference monitors a lot. And you're right. The first time you get up there, it's one of those things that you're like, oh, look, my slides are right there. And you start looking down to, especially if you have your yeah. wall of text slides, yes. You'll, yes. you'll look down there and start reading from there. And so now you're yep. doing this the whole time, looking at your feet, essentially. Everybody's like, what the heck is he doing, right? Yep. Um, and so I really like when they have the, the slides in the back. Yeah. That way I have to look up and back so I can see what the, what's going on. Uh, that works a lot better, in my opinion. Agreed. Um, or if you, again, use very small text or very small images on a slide, you can do a quick glance down at the confidence monitor and go, okay, this is a picture of a plane. That goes into this story about when I was on a plane one mm -hmm. time, right? Or this was a sentence of this. Now let me tell my story about that thing. And that helps keep you on track too. But if you have too much stuff, you're just literally reading it, people are going to know. So you want a quick glance and then go back to what you're doing. <laughs>